member FDIC. In the studio is the Speaker of the House, Philip Gunn, and also, and I hope we can get him on TV here, it is Trey Lamar back with us, the Chairman of Ways and Means. Good morning, sir. Good Sirs. morning. Good morning, Paul. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Glad to be with you today. Un unexpected guest here, but I think... All right, first of all, let's get to the matters at hand. The biggest thing is and, and uh, the reaction so far after the passage, Mr. Speaker, of... Um, well, what was the bill? It's uh, 1231 or? 1439, sir. 1439. Income tax yep. re elimination for the citizens of the state of Mississippi. What has been the feedback? Everybody who reads that bill and understands that bill is for that bill. Mm. The only uh, people who are against the bill that I can tell are those who are, have a political agenda or those who have uh, a self-serving interest at hand. In other words, their pocketbooks uh, are going to be affected. But other than that, Everybody who reads it, understands it, is excited about it. This is a $1.9 billion tax refund to the citizens of the state. And uh, the, the way the bill is crafted, every citizen ought to end up with money back in their pockets. Sure. And who, who can be against that? That's true. <clears throat> Gerilyn uh, Lamar, you said on the, on the floor, this is not a perfect bill. But I, I guess that would mean also that if the House has some, or the Senate has some problems with it, and if they have better suggestions to do something with it besides kill it. Oh, well, sure. Uh, if they have suggestions, we, we would welcome that. But uh, but uh, it, it's, no bill we pass uh, is rarely mm -hmm. perfect. But this is, a, this is a great bill for the taxpayers of this state. Uh, and anybody who, can, who really can do simple math knows that this, this will be a benefit to all the the uh, working people of Mississippi. So is there is there any give and take on this one, Philip? Is there is there you know if you did consult with the with the Senate saying we could back this down or or leave this out or do you think the balance has been matched on this thing after as Trey said yesterday uh, dealing with this for about five looking at it for about five years? You think this is the one that uh, you. you Going to yes, fight sir. This battle yes, sir. We we believe this is a, a solid bill. Now, again, it, uh, the Senate we encourage them to mm -hmm. look at it. I, I've offered to sit down and walk through it with them. Uh, hope we'll do that today, and uh, explain the details. I know from being on this show many times, Paul, that <clears throat> you don't like to get into numbers, and your your eyes glaze over sometimes. After, when I start after talking a while, about numbers, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's but, just uh, so much. But let me just give you some numbers real Beautiful. quick. A citizen in this state that makes uh, $50,000 a year mm -hmm. uh, will receive a $2,000 refund into their pockets. A married couple will get a $100,000 uh, uh, elimination. That's $4,000 into that pocket of that of that couple. Uh, a citizen that makes $40,000 gets $1,500 back into their pocket. A lot of people don't know what they pay in income tax, but that's, that's the number. Yeah. If you make $40,000, you pay right at $1,500 into the state income tax. That's coming back into your pocket immediately. Now, in order to spend that on taxable items, sales tax items, keep in mind, you spend your, your, your paycheck on a lot of things that are not taxable, your mortgage, your car note, your insurance, other things like that. <clears throat> you don't pay tax on those things. We've raised the sales tax two and a half cents just on the things that you pay sales tax on. So in order to spend... Which would be new purchases. For the yes, sir. Part. That's yeah. correct. So in order for that individual who gets $2,000 back in their pocket to spend that $2,000 mm -hmm. at two and a half cents a transaction, they would have to spend $81,000 before they exhaust the $2,000 that we're giving them back. Now, a married couple would have to spend... That would be a four thousand dollars for them. They would have to spend over a hundred, hundred and sixty thousand dollars before they exhaust all that. He, so he get my, those numbers right. <clears throat> my point <laughs> is, it's impossible. Is it is virtually impossible for the citizens of this state to end up spending the tax refund that we're giving them. Therefore, they're going to get a net. Yep. refund into their pocket, which, think, and the beauty of this is, they now get to decide how that money's spent. This puts the power of the purchase back into the hands of the taxpayer. I think most people would, would say that if you go out and you're spending $81,000 a year on new purchases at a, on a $50,000 income, And you're only making $50,000, yeah. you, you're, you're getting in trouble. All right, let me, let me play devil's advocate here, because uh, here, are the, here are the things that I've heard and, and uh, I think need to be addressed. We understand that. As far as those who are retired and don't pay income tax, it's they're going to be paying an increased fee. But then again, 
most people who are retired with a fixable income don't go out and make eighty-one thousand dollar a year purchases. Well, Paul, I can I can comment on that. And so, most people who are retired, they have uh, what they do. You didn't get your Red Bull this morning. You got to pipe up a little bit there. <laughs> they did. They did not. Uh, th- those people spend a, a large. Um, a more more proportionate amount of their funds mm-hmm. on things such as groceries. We didn't even talk about that yet. So right. what we did right. is we cut the grocery tax in half. And so um don't want to go back into numbers, but this is very important. A person who makes $50,000 a year, the $50,000 a year man that the speaker was just talking about, is going to spend somewhere, um, U.S. Department of Labor statistics say, around $14,000 on consumable goods. Approximately half of that is spent on groceries. Okay, so you go. Um, I would think it'd be more than that. You talk well, about per person, per person under those numbers. And so let's just say let's just say it's uh, ten thousand dollars. Okay, for round numbers' sake, on goods that would be subject to the increased tax, that's two hundred and fifty dollars extra. So you had fifty thousand dollar a year man just put two thousand dollars in his pocket, mm-hmm. and the increased sales tax cost him two fifty. Do the math for me on that. How is that not a benefit to taxpayers in the state? A no. substantial benefit. And, and, Philip, the other part of this is going to be small businesses. And, and we, we noticed also as far as farmers are concerned, as far as implements are, that would go for anybody who's trying to buy some new equipment, uh, regardless of what the business happens to be. Well, I, in, incidentally, the uh, National Federation of Independent Business endorsed this plan. So the small businesses have come out in favor of this. The Mississippi Center for Public Policy, Americans for Tax Reform, We have had uh, a lot of outfits who've come out and endorsed the plan. Like I said, everybody who reads it, understands it, is for it. Uh, The only ones that I've heard from who, uh, and I'll speak to your listening audience, if there's somebody out there telling you that this is going to work to your harm, don't listen to them. They're not telling you the truth. This works to the benefit. Now, now let me back up, Paul. We're just talking about eliminating the first 50000 of income tax immediately. In five years, that threshold goes to 100000 per person, $200,000 for a couple. Mm-hmm. And in 10 years, based on the growth triggers, the entire income tax is eliminated. Well, let me let me go back to those growth figures. Uh, growth, uh, the, the, as far as the activations are concerned, are those re- are, are those reasonable based on um, on, on the history of the last let's yes, say sir. thirty sure. or forty years? Yes, sir. The 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 growth average growth rate state of Mississippi the last ten years is three point two percent. So in this plan, we factored in a one and a half percent inflation factor, and what our plan says is that we will eliminate. Uh, Sixty million dollars a year, which is one percent, will eliminate one percent of of our income tax per year, over and above that inflation factor. So, so if we grow two and a half percent, one percent comes off. Like I said, the uh, the average growth rate's been three point two. So we clearly have been within that. Had we been doing this for the last ten years, it would have worked. Now, the the trigger is if we don't meet that, then it doesn't roll off. Is that, just mor- is that moratorium, uh, Trey, a, a year, an annual moratorium, and then the, the next um, yes. legislative session? Yes, that's correct. Have, okay. We have to meet that. But so, if, if we just met those historical averages, the, the income tax will be eliminated in less than 10 years if we just did what we've done the last 10 years. Let me do this, uh, go to the C Spire text line. The, if good news, the good news there, though, Paul, is that there is a day coming, mm-hmm. be it 10 years from now, 12 years from now, there is a day coming when all income tax will be eliminated. Who else in the South is either they're working on it like we are now or they've already eliminated it, but who else is Tennessee left? is our nearest neighbor who has no income tax. And well, Florida. Florida doesn't have it. They don't have it. They're not a well, Texas they're not a near have it. Texas, Florida, and Tennessee are the three in the so South. Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi. Still. They all have it, yeah. I'm, have not, sure, I'm not sure if they've got something working through their legislature. They're not process. aware of anything, no. Uh, well, that's good news for us. It puts us on a competitive advantage. If it is, then your taxes are rolled into your monthly payments, so you are paying taxes on a car note that goes wrong. I have no idea what that means. You don't pay taxes on a car note. Uh, hello, I am curious. As an example, 30% of disability rate. Some states do this. For example, is a thir- I haven't read this over, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not telling you the quality of the question. For example, is a 30% disability rating would be allowed if the 30% deduction is in his or her property taxes? At Pro- the moment, we are only offering this benefit to 100% disabled veterans. Thanks, Charles. 
there's no this doesn't affect property taxes at all. At all. Not at all. This is nothing more than sales tax and income tax. It doesn't is, affect gasoline. Yeah. Doesn't uh, affect gas. Gasoline's uh, an excise. How tax. is the revenue going to be made up? We'll talk about that when we come okay, back. We'll do that. In, the, in the remarks, there were some uh, explanations of that that were sound and some revelations about that. We'll talk that and more stuff. All right, let's get back here. I, I need two hours on this, and we don't have enough time here. Trustmark Studios. Uh, Paul, I like the bill, but I feel like it's uh, gone a little rush job. How long we've been working on it, et cetera. Does MEC support the bill? Anybody? Jump. Yes. Uh, we had hearings as, long, as far back as four or five years ago. You may remember, Paul, during the summertime, we had uh, exhaustive hearings on a lot of different topics, one of which was tax reform. This is something that we have tried to look at for a long time. And uh, at that hearing, the, the, the Tax Foundation out of Washington, D.C. came, and they offered basic tax advice, which mm-hmm. is you, the better tax policy, the states that seem to prosper the most, base their tax structure on consumption taxes, which are sales taxes, use taxes, that sort of thing, not income taxes. And we see right now, as you mentioned earlier, Florida, Texas, Tennessee, states that don't have the income tax have people moving to them. They have businesses thriving. And we are trying to put ourselves on that plane. So, yes, uh, the, the tax foundation said you need to move towards consumption tax as much as possible and away from income tax. Income tax is a tax on productivity, and it's punitive. So that's what we're doing, and we're putting money back into the pockets of the taxpayer. Also in the, uh, the studio, and available uh, C Spire TV, uh, Channel 70, by the way, and also at uh, supertalk.fm forward slash watch uh, is uh, Chairman Trey Lamar. John Reed was on yesterday, appropriation chair in the House, your appropriation chair. Yes, sir. And we were talking about what the cities and some of them went back when he was mayor. He he didn't like to hear this, but ultimately uh, it passed the last time we had something like this, and the cities actually prospered. Uh, there are some mayors that I've heard from are worried about this. Uh, your thoughts? Well, the cities were made whole. The cities received a diversion in uh, in sales taxes, mm-hmm. and we made them completely whole with when the cut uh, to the grocery taxes went into place in the bill. And so, they are they're whole. Uh, they have nothing to nothing to worry about. Well, well, they, well, they have to understand too. When you talk about two thousand dollars, just let's just say around two thousand average from the citizens in that company uh, in that in that community, uh, there's going to be more money on the streets. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Absolutely. And we look when there's more money, uh, when you pay less in grocery taxes, you're probably going to buy more groceries. So they're probably going to do better. So what's the deadline on this one, Philip? We had a deadline of, uh, yesterday to pass it. We did. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's another couple of weeks for the Senate to uh, to pass it, and then hopefully they will. One of the things you guys said is that, and, and I know this because there are a lot of times there are some things that I hear that, that as you well know, is off the record. I'm not going to put it on the air, but talking to folks off the air and uh, during the day, uh, over the years, uh, one of the one of the biggest um, uh, ripoffs we have is the underground economy as far as income tax is yeah. concerned. And and I, I I never equated this until you mentioned it. There's a legal one where people use it legally, but then there's this illegal where they just don't file because they may have a cash. Uh, economy or whatever they're doing. But that's a large portion, which means the pie is smaller and smaller, and there are fewer and fewer people to pay into that pie. That's exactly right, Paul. I mean, the way this plan works is we expanded the tax base. You expand the tax base, and what that means is you get those people who, who aren't paying their fair share. Mm-hmm. And I, I use this illustration on the on the floor. The drug dealer on the street with a wad of cash in his pocket, he's not He's not paying income taxes, but he'll pay sales taxes. The guy from Oklahoma driving to the beach in Florida coming through Mississippi is not paying Mississippi income taxes, but he's he's using our roads and our public safety while he's in our state, but he's paying sales taxes while he's here. It's just you're broadening the base. And so uh, you're, you're, you're ending that punishment to work, uh, that income yeah. tax, and you're able to fund government at the exact same levels. It, it just makes good common sense. Another thing, too, uh, Mr. Speaker, you get people who are just, you know, go to work every single day in an office or something. They're not farmers. They're not business people or, or um, heavy uh, truck drivers or whatever it happens to be in companies. There are a lot of incentives they already get. Now, for people who don't know this, if you're buying a piece of equipment like that, let's say at the farm, 
Uh, it's not like buying a car. They already get a pretty good cut. Yes, sir. The tax structure currently uh, only charges a 1.5% sales tax for farm implements. One and, it's 1.5%? 1.5%. I thought the, it was a little more citizen, than that. But no, sir. The citizens, you, the, the people listening on this radio, are paying 7 cents sales tax right now. And, and a farmer pays 1.5%. 1.5%. One one and one and uh, that car, would, that would go are, up to 1. Cars are only 5% uh, right now. Um there are others that have a, a lesser rate. There, there are quite a few industries uh, that have a, a lesser sales tax rate. And all we've done here is just ask them to do their part. If that's, the that, citizens, that's that if, legal uh, group you're talking about. If the citizens are, are going to go up two and a half cents, then it's only fair that the rest of them go up two and a half cents as well. And that's that's all we were asking, they, for them to do their fair share. That helps all the citizens of the state of Mississippi. To the to the answer, where is the money going to be raised to fill that void? That's it. And you've got to, you've guys have put the pencil to, it, to it's, that. It's just yeah. it's two and a half cent sales tax, which, as I said in my illustration mm-hmm. a minute ago, nobody will ever spend more than they're going to get back in here's, income. Here's what I do not understand. I'm going to be just uh, open and honest with you. I don't understand why some of the teachers have been – inflamed to uh, rile against this. I would think the teacher out there who's going to, she's making $50,000 a year, and, and, and many of them do, um, why they would be against this. It makes no sense, Paul. Uh, simple math, they're going to put more money in their pocket under this plan. Uh, it's just simple math. And so uh, we we still giving the teachers a $1,000 pay raise, yeah. and that $50,000 a year teacher is going to put $2,000 tax-free back into their pocket on top of the $1,000 pay raise. And we're going to still fund government at the roughly the same levels. We're not cutting some big hole in government. Education is not to take not about to take some major cuts that I think that somebody has has uh, poisoned the well with some with some fear mongering. That's just untrue. That's not true at all. Does um, does Nancy Loom and that group think maybe the, the that's where the problem is? They'll lose some educational dollars as far as administration. I, 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 I is concerned? don't know, but I do know that there have been some misrepresentations made to the teachers that are completely inaccurate. The average teacher salary in Mississippi is around forty four thousand. I believe. Mm-hmm. So uh, under the, the the figures I gave you in the very beginning, a person making $40,000 gets $1,500 back into their pocket under the, immediately. The day this thing passes, they don't have to pay income tax on what they make. And so they get $1,500 back plus the $1,000 teacher pay raise that we put into this bill. The teachers, he or she, will get a $2,500 pay raise versus the $1,000 raise that that these other groups are wanting them to take a yep. teacher who's making fifty thousand immediately gets two thousand dollars back into his or her pocket plus the one thousand dollar pay raise that we put in place. that's three thousand bucks why would they be against it I have no idea but uh, be, you, it, it you, goes back to what i said in the beginning paul there are people with <coughs> political agendas the only people against this are people with political agendas or or selfish uh interest at foot maybe needing to call the press conferences the association of math teachers maybe that would uh, maybe that would help out i, I, w- I do want to say this though <clears throat> not only that savings is there but when they go to the grocery store there's going to be additional savings there sure exactly another we're cutting the grocery tax in half so you're exactly right they get additional benefit on top of that the the timetable for for this to come out of the senate you said is when about a couple of weeks i haven't checked and the then day, it goes but... it goes back and and you go to conference on yeah. it well hopefully they will take it uh, as Without is that, yeah. because uh b- because it's we think it's it's solid but now if they have ideas and they want to tweak some things we're certainly open to talking to them about that the bottom line is, is we got to keep our eye on the goal here and the goal is to get tax relief to all mississippians if there are any questions on this one trey and and the speaker, I'm sure you know. This, sure. uh, you got an email. Send an, uh, an email. Yeah. You guys yeah. will answer. It. Send us an email, or, or, or just uh, a lot of people know how to get it. A hold of us on social media. Call the Capitol. Call the speaker's office. Ways and means we can answer any questions anybody has. Almost out of time here, believe it or not. But I just want to. Where does the um, the wildlife fund uh, stand right now, as far as that one's concerned? Well, it's uh, it's in the Senate. You haven't heard any rumblings over there? I, we've been so busy on our end of the hall, Paul, and uh, yesterday was a revenue deadline for the House, and so my my plan today is to is to get down on the other end of the building yep. and uh, spend some time with, with our, our uh, senators and, and uh, learn kind of where we are on some of those measures. Well, I will tell you my auctioneer friends are not happy with you guys as far as the auctioneer thing, is, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens with that one. Let's speak to the boards. Is that a winning out of a lot of the boards, or did you pick just several? 
No, there were there were several that were identified. You know, this has been something that many conservative, pro business uh, think tanks have have been pushing. Just the the fact that uh, there are a lot of licenses that exist to do mm-hmm. nothing more than to keep competition down. And so uh, we tried to identify a few that we felt like uh, you don't have to have a license yeah. to do it. But uh, we we continue to work on that bill, and and certainly have I've talked to the auctioneers myself and. Have understand their concerns. We're willing to entertain them. About the pawnbrokers, where's that bill? That bill still alive? As far as pawn, I think it's. I think it's no. I think it's seven uh, three. I don't recall exactly. I think oh, here it goes. died on our end. It died on our end. I Motion believe. to reconsider entered by uh, b- 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 several people. So yeah, that it, that bill died on the deadline day. I got it. We'll have a couple of more. See if we can squeeze them in the last segment. It's okay. Sure. Yes, sir. We got it. House and Senate both convened at 10 o'clock this morning. Back with more. Let's get back limited time here at Trustmark Studios with the Speaker of the House, Philip Gunn, and uh, the Chairman of the Powerful Ways and Means Committee. Uh, it you is just couldn't stop Martin. yourself, could no, you? No, I couldn't. It, uh, one question more. One more question. We have uh, like 15 pages here, but let me get to this one. Commercial construction is taxed at 3.5%. Will it increase under this bill? Not under the current measure, no. Well, is there an additional measure after that? No, sir. So well, I don't know what the saying. Senate may do, but under our, the bill we passed under the House, the bill that they're you not, passed, they're not well, well, they don't have a companion bill. They're working off of your bill. That's right. Okay, so the answer to that is no, it will not increase. We hope not. That was not our intention. All right, let's um, let, let's let's put a final thought on this one, Trey, as far as uh, wrapping it up here. Yeah, your, just, your thoughts on this one. And some of the feedback you've been getting, I understand, is good, but there are people who are not happy with it. Simple math, Paul. This is a for anybody who thinks this is not a tax uh, a tax cut. Uh, just is not looking at the numbers. This is a substantial a substantial tax uh, cut. More money into working Mississippians' pockets all across the state. And uh, I would welcome your listeners to get behind this and, and rise up and support it. It is it is by far the largest policy, uh, the best policy the most impactful policy and transformative policy that I have done yeah. that we've worked on in our careers. I, I think in a lot of ways this is as historic as the flag. It really is because it, it positions ways. us in many well, ways. From, from a policy standpoint, from it a is. From a policy standpoint, yeah, the flag, is. I don't know if it's necessarily a policy issue, but, but from a policy standpoint, this is the most significant thing that any legislator will ever do in his or her career. Let me, and I think the citizens need to understand that. And, and to, to put a final point on it, Paul, the, the listeners just need to go do the math. They need to sit down and contemplate what they spend, what they buy that is taxed with a sales tax. Everybody needs to, to, to sit and, and just look at their their salary and say, okay, I, I don't pay a tax on my house note. I don't pay tax on my insurance. A, a lot of the things that they're spending money on, mm-hmm. they don't pay a sales tax. Those things are off the table. Only the things that you pay a tax on. You pay a tax on your car purchases. You pay a tax on your uh, grocery purchases. But there again, we're cutting your grocery tax in half. So if they will go and and do the math and say, okay, let me add up what I'm spending that is taxable on a sales tax. Gasoline is not included there either, Paul, because gasoline is an excise tax. It's not a sales tax. So you got to take that out of the mix. If you sit down at your kitchen table tonight and add up the things that are subject to a sales tax, Mm -hmm. you will never spend at two and a half cents the amount of money we're giving you back on your income tax refund. We use the 50000 because it's an even number there. And, again, I didn't mean to imply that all teachers out there make 50000 No, sir. I but think even, so. even if a teacher who's making, let's say, an average of thirty three or 34000 Oh Well, I think the starting salary is around 34000 yeah. now. So a, 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 a person who's making $30,000 a year will receive a $1,000 refund. They would have to spend upwards of fifty thousand dollars to exhaust that one thousand mm-hmm. dollars at two and a half cents. A person making forty four, I mean, excuse me, forty thousand gets a fifteen hundred dollar refund, and a person making fifty gets two thousand. Now, keep in mind that's every Mississippian. 
you don't have to make fifty thousand yeah. dollars exactly. You make a million dollars, you still get the the, the fifty thousand dollar tax break. And in five years, that goes up to a hundred per person, two hundred per couple, and in ten years, it goes away immediately uh, altogether. What, so what you see is a lot more money in the economy because of that on on a regular basis. It's not going to be a one time money that come in. It, you're keeping it in your paycheck. If I and, gave you two thousand yeah. dollars a day, what would you do with it, Paul? At two thousand dollars, if um, I just walk in and hand you two thousand, what would you do? <clears throat> well, first of all, I'd probably probably hit the liquor store because I'm so happy. Absolutely. You'd spend it, right? <laughs> yeah, you'd probably spend it on your wife, right? Well, uh, absolutely. You would spend it on your but wife. But then again, Let alcohol, me help you out. alcohol yeah. is going to go up, so I don't know. Uh, well, uh, uh, it's, it's subject to a sales tax. We're still working on those ABC measures, though. Trying to get some meaningful Tell me, tell me where we are with that, because there's a lot of alcohol legislation still alive. Well, the ABC reform uh, bill, we passed it about three weeks ago. It's, mm-hmm. it's in the Senate, and I, that's one of the things I'm what does it say? To meet with him today. It, it would just it would abolish the ABC. It would get the government out of the liquor business and let the private sector come into the state. You know and, the liquor store is not in favor of that. Well, um, we'll see, Paul. It's uh, we, they, The liquor stores have had a hard time over the last year mm-hmm. getting their product, and so I'm for trying to improve the ways uh, that they can operate their business. But have you talked to them? I've talked to several of them. We've had hearings and meetings All right. uh, galore. Guys, I thank you so very much. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Paul. Always a pleasure to be with Everything you. Everything on track. You think you guys got to be signing dining when, <clears throat> when you're supposed to? We, we, we certainly hope to, yes. Please. Anybody with COVID come down? Or it, it, it seems we've been to be very blessed, clear. Paul. We uh, yeah. in the house. We either all had it or we've had the vaccine. Kudos <laughs> on the on the the method of uh, transmission now for as far as YouTube because it's so much better. Thank you, you guys. Are doing a good job. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank it's you, Paul. The uh, Speaker of the House, Philip Gunn, and uh, the Chairman of Ways and Means, Trey Lamar. I hope you are better informed now across the state. If not, we leave that task to John Horn. He'll. Do-